What's up, Ozones? Welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another Gravity Falls reaction video. Today we are reacting to episodes 15, 16 and 17 of season 2. I believe that these are going to be two filler episodes again and then there's going to be one big episode which leads into the big finale of the series. But this is the second to last, the penultimate Gravity Falls reaction video. So welcome to the premiere if you're in the premiere. Just to let you know that the final uh, reaction video is going to be premiering on Halloween at the usual time. So be there on Thursday, uh, members and non-members combined. I would love to see as many of you there as possible so that we can all watch the finale together. Uh, if you want to become a member, then you get every single reaction up to this point and that last episode eventually as well. You get all of that for, f uh, not for free, <laughs> for one dollar a month. And it is the full uncut reactions. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> you can do that if you want to. Um, okay, so last time we saw that Gideon is probably going to come back. That I, I think it goes without saying that if Gideon is back, then Bill Cipher is probably back. So I'm excited to see where that goes. Um, Let's just dive straight in to episode number 15. Let's go. Oh, weird. Are we the invisible wizard? <laughs> who are we? Who? What perspective are we? Whoa. Whoa. Yo. What? Oh, that laugh. Show yourself. Okay, so what's their relationship? You knew I'd be back. You think shutting down that portal could stop what I have planned? I've been making deals, chatting with old friends, preparing for the big day. Oh no. You'll slip up and when you do. <laughs> That shot is amazing. Oh, Bill Cipher. That was so cool. That was so sick, man. That was so sick. So it seems like they also have a past, right? Because Bill Cipher has actually been calling Stan Lee Stanford, even though. Like, he should know that it was Stan Lee, but he's saying Stanford, so it's kind of weird that he doesn't know, he doesn't recognize the difference between the two. Do either of you recognize this symbol? <gasps> Bill. You, you know him? Know him? He's been terrorizing us all summer. I have so many questions and theories. Dipper's been pretty paranoid since Bill turned him into a living sock puppet. <laughs> we defeated him twice. Once with kittens and once with pickles. It was a lot more heroic than it sounds. <laughs> it's true, though. A way to bill-proof the shack. All I have to do is place moonstones here, here, and here, sprinkle some mercury. Let's see. I always forget the last ingredient. So there's like al an alchemist, again, kind of theme here. It's hopeless. Unicorns reside deep within an enchanted glade, and their hairs can only be obtained by a pure, good-hearted person who goes on a magical quest to find them. It's going to be Mabel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bart, can I please go on this quest? I am literally obsessed with unicorns. My first word was unicorn. I once made my own unicorn by taping a traffic cone to a horse's head. <laughs> <laughs> what are I wearing right now? Not to mention that I'm probably the most pure of art person in this room. I, I would agree with that. <laughs> please, please, please. I'll give you my blood. Very well. Jesus. It's interesting there's three floor. Oh, the second floor, yeah. Oh, wow. Ancient and secret knowledge. The prism is there. Stan doesn't know about this place. Cool, the thingy. Dipper, come along. Don't pause that. <laughs> it says to summon the unicorn, one must bellow this ancient chant droned only by the deepest voiced druids of old. On it! <laughs> I 
<laughs> and bucks, nothing happens. I'll take that bet. <gasps> hey. We knew. We believed. Wow, sexy. That was a joke. That was a joke. <laughs> I'm not attracted to the unicorn, guys. I swear. Mark, visitors to my realm of enchantment. <gasps> I feel like that's a guy doing like a high-pitched voice. I am Celeste Bell. I am Celeste Bell. To receive a lock of my enchanted hair. Step forth, girl of pure, perfect heart. Presenting, bum ba -da -ba 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 Mabel. She's not going to be the one with the pure heart. Can see deep inside your heart, child. Oh. And you have done wrong. Wrong, I say. Oh. I do make fun of Dipper a lot, and I did just shatter a window with a crossbow. Your bad deeds make me cry. Oh, oh. From this moment forth, I'm gonna do so many good deeds. I'll have the purest heart and gravity falls. Oh my God. Oh my god. <laughs> Mabel. Exactly. No one knows for sure. If I have to decode all that binary. True motivations and origins. The cipher file. No, he's older than our galaxy. Ah. Far more twisted. He, obviously it is his shack. Only project himself into our thoughts through the mindscape. That's why he wants this. I dismantled the portal, but with this tear, Crazy. Phil still has a way into our Obviously reality. it's Stanford's shack and he made all like the windows and stuff that have bill cypher on it so well there's a number of ways i personally had a metal plate installed in my head <laughs> good one <laughs> oh man i can't believe i'm with the author my flight down with me. Wendy, wendy 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 what the <laughs> wendy 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 crushing like 10 dandelions right now those are basically children's dreams. <gasps> I'm sorry, Mabel. It's not my fault you're a bad person. <gasps> Mabel, wait. Come back. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a three o'clock posing in front of a rainbow. <laughs> Jesus. Oh. Forget about getting that dumb unicorn hair. It's not about the hair anymore, guys. It's about me. Being kind and sweet is what makes me who I am. But you don't need that unicorn's validation. That's cool. Get me a flagon of your daintiest <laughs> See some ID. Oh, the cops! Hit the deck! The cops. Fairy dust. A whole magic bag. He's doing that thing. Unicorn it's great. Cold. But if I do you a favor, you gotta do something for is me. Is that like Schmebulok's dad or something? Butterfly trafficking is illegal in this part of the forest, but I like butterflies. They tickle my face and make me laugh. Bring me a bag of butterflies and we got a deal. A bag of butterflies. Okay. Rip Schmebulok? What? Schmebulok died? That's what it said. Two bags oh of fairy God. dust, just like we agreed. <laughs> you get this stuff. Everyone likes sausage, but no one <laughs> likes to know how it's made. I can't believe this was shown on Disney. Yo, Seabeth, are you seriously pulling this pure of heart scam again? That is messed up. <laughs> All our dumb horns can do is glow, point towards the nearest rainbow, and play rave music. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a stupid joke. Just a line we use to get humans to leave us alone. Okay. What are you gonna do about it? Huh? Ooh. Woo! Go Mabel! <laughs> Join the dark side. Yes, Mabel. Fight you're gonna get! <laughs> Why does Grenda always have like the weirdest weapons? This is taking forever. How long have I been doing oh, this? Oh, there's so much to look out there. Why does he have to be so mysterious about Bill? I can handle the truth. I wonder what Great Uncle Ford is thinking. What are you hiding about Bill? <laughs> Where are these ideas coming from? Who are you working with? 
My brother is a dangerous know-it-all. He would trick or possess anyone, and it's a deal. From now until the end of time. Just let me into your mind, Stanford. Please, call me a friend. <laughs> Ford and Bill? <gasps> what? so he could get this ah! careful hand me the rift now boy why were you really scanning my thoughts are you Bill right now now just just calm down P pie tree is that what you were going to call me i was gonna say please kid great uncle ford told me to protect the rift get one step closer and i'll shoot i'll erase you right out of ford's head it's me dipper it's your uncle trust no one trust no one just hand it to me ah! I am shocked. Now, now, just calm down. Calm down. Look into my eyes. Look at my pupils. It's me, Dipper. It's me. I tried to erase your mind. I'm so sorry. It's okay, Dipper. Besides, my mind can't be erased anyway, remember? <laughs> True. The reason I've been trying to prepare you for Bill's tricks is because Bill tricked me. It's the biggest regret of my life. Okay. I... I thought they were working together. Oh my gosh. I had hit a roadblock in my investigation of Gravity Falls. Until I found some There's so much in this episode. In Ancient incantations about a being with answers. Okay. Until later that afternoon when I had the most peculiar dream. Wow. There's math in the background again. Journals. Oh my god. Smart guy. Smart guy. Smart guy. Smart guy. Yeah. Whoa, don't have a heart attack. You're not 92 yet. <laughs> he told me he was a muse, that he chose one brilliant mind a century to inspire. What a fool I was, blinded by his flattery and games. Mm. He became my research assistant. He was free to move in and out of my mind as he pleased. We were partners. Oh my gosh. It's a big part of the story to leave out, man. He said this was the way genius happened. With a little help from a friend. It huh. seemed that I was on the verge of my greatest achievement. Until my partner got a glimpse of Bill's true plans. Bill, you lied to me! I see. Looks like Mr. Brainiac finally got smart. Let's just say that when that portal finishes charging up, your dimension is gonna learn how to party. Right, guys? Oh, what? I'd been betrayed. I shut the portal down. <laughs> World and ours. I had to hide my instructions so no one could ever finish Bill's work. Bill's been waiting for the gateway to reopen ever since. All he needs to do is get his hands on this rift. To Bill, it's just a game. But to us, it would mean the end of our world. Yeah, yeah, okay. Got you. They finally gave us this treasure just to get rid of us. It can't be. This is a great day, girls. With this unicorn hair, we'll be able to completely shield the shack from Bill's mind-reading tricks. Great. Better than okay. It's perfect. You've protected your family. You're a good person, Mabel. <laughs> Today I learned that morality is relative. Money! <laughs> Oh, that's sick. Nice. I guess I can't possess anyone inside the shack, so I'll just have to find my next pawn on the outside. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be Gideon. Oh my god. That was, I kid you not, for me, that was one of the greatest episodes so far. Including Not We Seems, what not what he seems, including Tale of Two Stands including the, the puppet episode, like, that genuinely peak television, peak story progression. Like, I entered this episode thinking we were not going to get, like, a lore-heavy episode or anything that progresses the plot for another few episodes, right? And this one just comes out of 
absolutely nowhere. The intro literally features Bill Cipher. Oh my god. So, uh, the, the plot thickens, I guess. So, Ford used to work with Bill, but Bill tricked him and is now going to, uh, to like, open up a interdimensional rift or whatever that is going to make our world party, essentially. So, that's very interesting. And now we have this kind of shield around the mystery shack, which is cool. But I assume um, that's not going to be very helpful, right? Because they're going to leave the mystery shack a few times. And there's also a lot of people outside the mystery shack that he can use to his advantage. So this is really, really interesting. So much lore in this. And even worse, <laughs> so many secret codes that I saw in this episode. I don't know we may as well try and just solve them now. I don't I don't see why not. Let's let's have a go. Let's start with the uh, end screen. And it is, of course, Stanford Pines. His face. So there we go. That is our confirmation that it is the two stands here, which, you know, it, it is at the center of the story, right? That that is what this story is about. It's a story about the two original mystery twins and the two modern mystery twins and what's in the middle i'm assuming is going to be bill cypher and bill cypher is in the middle of all of this he had a deal with stanford and that's how stanford and stanley got split in the first place as well because of that portal so it's like wow yeah this is this is really cool this is really really cool so there's stanford's face and yeah we're gonna have um his hair and stuff up here oh wow Wowzers. Okay, so only six to go. Only six puzzle pieces to go. We know what it is, but there we go. Let's let's decode these numbers. Um, they should be pretty quick. What I want to say while I'm typing this out is I started this series a little bit like... I, I didn't really know how to feel, right? Because I've been told to watch the series by multiple people and I'm like, yeah, I, I, I'm not too into like cartoons and stuff. And I don't know how much I will enjoy this, but I'm I'm probably going to enjoy it. So let's uh, let's just give it a watch anyway. I did not go in expecting to be this hooked. Um, genuinely, it's 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 probably the greatest show I've ever seen. Um, it's just so it's so deep and like the plot is just amazing and it makes so much sense to me. And all of these secrets just make that. Uh, like increase the magnitude of 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 that um so i'm I, and i'm really grateful as well to actually have you guys watching my reactions to this because obviously if this was just me sat in my bedroom watching it every night uh, by myself then like it would it, it would still be really good and i would still really really love it but it wouldn't be the same experience because i don't think i would be doing all of this uh on camera uh like what i'm doing on camera I don't think I would be decoding any of it and stuff. So this is the really, really fun part. And I I love it. I absolutely love it. I didn't think I would love this show, but it's one of the best shows I've ever seen. All right. Let's see what this says. In Cypher's game, he needs a pawn. Be sure to know which side you're on. That's cool. Um, I like how they reference a pawn there because they showed that they were playing interdimensional chess or whatever. Um, so that's a cool, cool, cool back as well. We, we've actually seen chess quite a few times in this series. It is almost like this whole series is a game of chess. You kind of have your, um, like your, the characters on our side. Um, I would say we have like the king and the queen, which are, um, Stanford and Stan Lee. Uh, I'm not going to tell you which one's the queen. And then we have like, I don't know. Uh, well, I, I don't know where I'm going with this, but like essentially we have like the good side and the bad side. And I'm assuming we haven't seen much of the bad side yet. I'm assuming that's going to come out when Bill Cypher gets his hand, hands on um, the rift or whatever. But like what I'm trying to say is like, this is all one big game of chess. Like we're, we're moving forward one. He is taking his turn and we're, we're trying to like get our way between and like, yeah checkmate him essentially um so yeah that's that's a really cool one um 
Let me see if I can find the key and if we find any ciphers along the way, then we will try our best to decode it. This opening is so, it's such a cold opening, right? It's so, it's so amazing. And this shot, I can already tell you, like I haven't, I haven't made a thumbnail for this obviously yet, but this is definitely going to be the thumbnail. <laughs> That's going to be in the thumbnail. There is no way this shot is in the show and I'm not going to use it for a thumbnail. It is so, so cool. That might even be my background, like desktop picture at this point because it's so sick. Uh, and I, I've, I've said before, I love Bill's design, but like Bill in like silhouette Bill is like mad. It's, it's crazy. He's such a simple design as well. So crazy. Literally just a triangle with arms and legs. All right. So I saw a lot in, in, uh, the second floor of the bunker or whatever. So that'd be good to do. Um, are there any like codes here? We have the fairy nail salon, the dark side, I think that said or something, the bad side. And then summoning the unicorn. We, we have these drawings again of like, th like this is what Stanford used to draw when he was a kid. Um, it's all piecing together, isn't it? Um, okay, nothing more to that. Literally just a Stonehenge in the middle of Gravity Falls that no one's come across. Um, okay, so I'm not decoding that binary. If that binary is a thing, let me know in the comments <laughs> because I would I would happily decode it, but that's gonna be a lot of typing out of zeros and ones. Um, I I would love to know uh, if that is if that is binary, but I'm not gonna decode it right now because that's gonna take ages and it's probably not even a code in the first place. So, seen throughout history, who keeps drawing these? It's kind of, it is giving me Illuminati vibes. I don't know, um, oh my gosh. Okay, we, we have to read this. It, it's giving me Illuminati vibes, like people claiming to be part of the Ill Illuminati and like a whole group of people who are like, I don't know, something to do with the government or something, like conspiracy again. Um, but yeah, pyramids, also known as square cones. <laughs> Uh, have they ever been called square cones? Okay. Uh, they're, they're found all around the globe and have a deeply mysterious origin. Modern engineers marvel at their seemingly impossible construction, but many don't realize they're actually just the skeleton remnants of an ancient race of large triangular dinosaurs who had very blocky bones. <laughs> the Cyclopsosaurus, Cyclop, Cyclopsosaurus was a feared predator and roamed the plains of northern Africa where it subs uh, subsisted on a diet of warthogs and meerkat. It's made tender by their carefree lives and trouble-free uh, philo philosophies. The reign of the pyramid continued well into the 18th century where a young George Washington once saw one on summer vacation and swore that he would found a nation um, with the sole purpose of putting an image on it on the back of dollar bills. Pyramids today are mainly tourist attractions and settings for conspiracy movies like that one where the guy has to steal the Declaration of Independence. You know the one. Conspiracy Hank goes overboard. If you ever get a skateboard, go to Egypt and try riding down the side of a pyramid. I hear that's very encouraged. That's really funny. Um, so yeah, that's the Eye of Providence. We've already talked about that uh, before. Which It's it's very provident in... Uh, Al... Allegan's Contractus? Let's have a look and see if that actually means anything. Okay, I just looked up the word and of course it's come up with those Gravity Fall stuff because what else would it come up with? Um, I, I don't like looking at like Gravity Falls specific sites and stuff for information, but oh well. Um, another page in the, t in the file is titled Allegan's Contractus, which is Latin for binding contract with a picture of an old man shaking Bill's hand. So yeah, okay, so that's a, that is, <laughs> if we're talking about the legal system here, that handshake right there with Bill Cipher is a legally binding contract. <laughs> that's mad. Um, I'm just wondering if there's any, I cannot read that text. I cannot read that small text, it's too small. Um, I'm wondering if when we get the journal, if we get journal three, if, that's, if that page is gonna be in journal three. This is really cool. Um, I really like this image, actually. Our world, Mindscape. So, Mindscapers, or Dreamscapers, sorry. 
um, where you can interact with Bill Cipher or whatever. Uh, that's that's what happened to Grunkle Stan. And then Nightmare Realm. Um, yeah, this is this is going to be a bit terrifying. We, we're going to enter the Nightmare Realm at some point, I think, probably. Um, let's solve this code. Uh, I assume it's something and something. Um, so let's have a look. We have been having a lot of these codes uh, in the series. Like, look, look it up here. Like, this is about the portal. Oh, can you, can you remember when we solved this? We we brute forced this, and um, I was like so crazy about that. But like now we know a lot more about the portal than meets the eye. Um, so eight. It is really cool to like go back on memory. It, it feel it genuinely feels like I started this series like two years ago. Um, it feels so long ago, and just to think about how much um, the series of Gravity Falls and this series itself has grown is insane to think about. So thank you guys for sticking around with me. Uh, I'm so glad that you enjoy this part of the videos where we actually decode stuff. Um, it's, it's, it's really enjoyable for me, and I'm glad that it's enjoyable for you too. Okay, let's take this formula. Don't mind me for one second, just using Excel again for everything. <laughs> uh, and then we want this to be C82. C82. And it doesn't work. What? Why, why does it not work? Circular dependency. Oh, it's C81. That makes sense. Okay. So it says black and white. Black and white. Oh, okay, so like in Dreamscaperers, when we enter the mind of Grunkle Stan, it is all in black and white. And also when Gideon first summons Bill Cipher, it's all in black and white. So maybe, maybe Bill, hmm. Yeah, no, we've theorized about this, haven't we? We have theorized about this because when, in the Sock Puppet episode, when Dipper sees Bill Cipher, it's because he's asleep, right? Well, at least that's what we've theorized. He, he, he blinks, and then suddenly he's in a dream, and we're seeing Bill Cipher talk to him. He's in the mindscape. Similarly, probably, with Gideon, I imagine when he does the summoning spell, he is actually, um, he's, he's actually transported himself to the mindscape, to talk to Bill Cipher. It's almost like Bill Cipher isn't in our world. Bill Cipher is just kind of, can only take forms within your mind, but he is trying to enter the real world. And that might be what the Rift is doing. Um, and that might be his, his big goal in all of this. Cause we still don't really understand fully like what Bill's motivation is, but like, we always go back to the matrices in the first, um, in the first, uh, like, uh, analysis video that we did. We still go back to those matrices where it said 2D to 3D. And like, that's, that's the biggest thing for me. It's like, he, maybe he wants to become a pyramid. <laughs> Don't we all? Don't we all want to become a pyramid? Um, so like, that's, that's really interesting, I think. Uh, but it's 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 really cool that they mentioned black and white there because I thought that was just like a um, a design choice for that episode or, or like for Stan's mind like Stan's mind is only black and white but no we we have seen that as like a common theme where black and white is a thing so maybe when everything is in black and white we know that there is some sort of thing going on with Bill that is quite interesting um, so this is reading the mind of Dipper. I am not going to be able to read this. Um, okay, man, I can't believe I'm with the author. Oh, man, I can't believe I'm with the author. Gosh, I hope no one was looking. Maybe I, if I cross my legs, no one will notice. May <laughs> wait, maybe if I cross my legs, no one will notice? Dipper. <laughs> Jesus. I cannot believe they put that in the show. Am I am I understanding that correctly? I don't want to say what it means, but I think I know what it means. Kinda, kinda hungry, but I could also not eat. Okay. Uh, where's the next one? 
I should really try out the president's key sometime. <laughs> I love this. These Easter eggs are so funny. Um, I could probably rub a bank. I miss Tyrone. Who's Tyrone? I recognize Tyrone. Oh! That's interesting. Tyrone. I miss Tyrone. So Tyrone was the first copied Dipper. Dipper. <laughs> um, so that's interesting. He was the one that melted in front of him. What I will say is, uh, I, I have seen comments and after re-watching the Double Dipper episode by myself, I've seen that there are actually two Dippers that escape. They, I think they get on a bike and leave, um, if I if I remember correctly. So they're, they're actually technically still out there. So I'm wondering if that's ever going to come back, but I, it probably won't. It, it's probably just like they forgot about it. Um, but really interesting that they, they referenced Tyrone here. I miss Tyrone. That's crazy. Um, that red bathing suit man. I don't know what that means. That red bathing suit man. I don't know. Um, and then, okay, let's read everything else and see uh, what else is happening in this shot. Okay. So, okay. I, I, I understand what's going on. So this is when he first found the journal in episode number one. This is <laughs> getting my Gravity Falls trivia out now. I might have to do a quiz at the end of this show. Uh, I know I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to do like a tier list. I think that'll be quite cool. This is from episode two of season two, where they go down to the bunker. Uh, is my fly down? Oh, maybe if I cross my legs, no one will notice. Um, I, <laughs> I accidentally, uh, I think I got a bit too dirty-minded there. Uh, disco girl, disco girl coming through. That's from Dipper vs. Manliness. Um, the eighth episode in season one. I can't remember the numbers at this point. This is from um, Not What He Seems, where he finds out that um, there are three three journals and Stan comes to the door or whatever. Why should we believe you? Coming through that girl is you. Wendy, 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 Wendy. Okay, great. I'm going insane. Um, what else? There's going to be more, isn't there? There's going to be a lot more. <laughs> Squirrel parking in the back. So this is like a, a gnome bar, I guess. There's a, there's a literal fox there. Oh my gosh! Yes! The key! Oh my gosh! I feel so rewarded. Okay, so Schmendrick. So I guess this guy's name is Schmendick and... Or Schmendrick. I probably shouldn't say Schmendick. Um, so I, I guess that's the name of the gnome that we end up talking to. Schmendrick. Okay. So let's put that key in and see what's going on. What is that? Is that just a bunch of rocks? I assume so. I thought it was like a face. Okay, so Schmendrick. Oh, it's so interesting. They're going through all the characters. Oh, I wonder, I wonder who his pawn is gonna be. Okay, let's, let's type out this code and let's get this. Okay, boom, 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 boom. Okay, it says, a simple man with eager ears may trust the whispers that he hears. A simple man, wait, 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 what was it? A simple man with eager ears may trust the, ma the, the whispers that he hears. I guess that's talking about Stanford trusting Bill. Um, because he, he, Stanford is a simple man, he has eager ears, he's trusting the whispers that he hears, so, yeah, I guess, I don't know, I, yeah, it's, yeah, fine, <laughs> okay, but I'm, I'm glad we found the key at least, because then I'm not gonna go cry about it once this re reaction is over, uh, let's have a look what else is here, I, I was actually gonna pause here, because I didn't know what this said, but it's gnome, gnome brew, Gnome Brow, I think, maybe. Um, like how they're using a uh, Five of Hearts here. Could that have any other meaning? What does Five of Hearts imply? Probably nothing. Um, okay. 
the thing I wanted to look at was up here, not the butterfly, here, no man's land, <laughs> no man's land, <laughs> that's great, Rip Schmebulok Senior, okay, I missed the, the Senior, okay, I missed the, I, I missed the Schmebulok Senior, here is, I was gonna say that's graffiti of a muffin again, like Robbie's been here, but no, it's graffiti of a mushroom, that's a lot better than the muffin, um, so there we go. And then I think the other thing I just wanted to look at was the rest of the stuff in the, the bunker. I don't know what to call this. Um, this was his like, his his workroom, right? His, his room. Uh, oh my gosh. I cannot believe they hide this many Easter eggs in one episode. This is crazy. This is so hard. I've been here forever. Um... Oh, it says, oh, this is so hard. I've been here forever. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, you. Eeny, meeny, miny, you. When did somebody say eeny, meeny, miny, you? Bill Cipher. It was it was Bill Cipher. He said, eeny, meeny, miny, you. That was from... Oh, I know what that was from. That was from, from the Sock Puppet episode. Uh, that was from the Sock Puppet episode where he made a deal. He made a binding contract with Dipper. We saw that same same action, uh, the the handshake, and then he was like, "Okay, so then, what puppet are you gonna choose?" And then he's like, "Eeny, meeny, miny, you." And then he takes his body. Uh, <laughs> uh, does Ford like me? I've always thought about this. Like, it it would be so weird if people could see your thoughts, because it would just change the way people do things. It would incriminate, incriminate like the entire planet, to be honest. <laughs> uh, except me, because I am such a pure, pure soul. Um, is Bill indestructible? What's his secret? Uh, who stole the capers? Oh, that's a reference to uh, Boys Crazy, I think. One of those episodes that I, I didn't enjoy as much. Um, where he had the book and that was the code at the end and I was like what the hell is a caper um does he have to be so mysterious about Bill why does he have to be so mysterious about Bill and I can handle the truth okay cool uh is there more I don't think so I think yeah it's, it's the same on every screen thank goodness by the way <laughs> thank goodness I love all this tech it's it's really it's giving me old time vibes which obviously makes sense knowing this is Ford or whatever. This scene was one of the best scenes, I think, in Gravity Falls so far. Um, it was just incredible when we found out about Bill Cipher and Ford's relationship here, when he put the thing on. Like, it, it was so smart of Dipper to do that. Um, I wonder what gra uh, Great Uncle Ford is thinking. I wonder what Great Uncle Ford is thinking. So that's just the same all the way through. Oh my gosh. Um, I'll show you his thoughts. Uh, use the machine. Oh, it'll use the machine to show you his thoughts. Just a peek, just a peek, just a peek. Okay. Uh, he wants your, he, he just doesn't know it. He wants your help. He just doesn't know it. He wants your help. He just doesn't know it. Yes, you are. Uh, what did that say? Uh, astute. I I would say good observation. Astute. Okay. And then he puts it on Grunkle Ford. And yeah, this, this scene is crazy. He just sees Bill Cipher on the screen. Like when Bill Cipher came up. Wait, let's, let's see. Um, I can't tell him he's not ready. Uh... Uh, I'm so theory of weird weirdness grand the grand unified theory of weirdness I'm so close I miss I miss dimension I miss dimension 52 oh fiddleford I'm sorry oh that's tragic uh crampleter crampleter I don't know uh okay so here we go Bill Slifer comes up 
greater scene starts here. Like we see Bill Cipher on the screen. That instantly gets me thinking, what the hell? Why is Bill Cipher in his mind? And then it makes me think like maybe Ford has been Bill Cipher this entire time, um, which is crazy to think about. And then this scene with Fiddleford up here, this is mental. This is so insane. Trust no one, I'm losing my mind. Oh my God. I love this this scene where he, he writes Trust No One. We've seen it a few times and it's just, it's it's it, it's the center of the show, really. Trust No One. We, we were told it in episode one and it set up the rest of the show. It's, it's great when shows do things like that. Um, yeah, okay. I think uh, Bill also called Ford Sixer, which is cool. Uh, so that that's this is where it gets insane. We see Bill Cipher all along the walls. Ah, oh, it's so cool, man. It is so cool. Look, we got the skull that we keep seeing. I think there's a scroll and a diamond, some sort of python, I think, maybe. A sword. Is that a pirate sword? Uh, what's a pirate sword called? A cutlass? I think it's called a cutlass. Um, it's like an atom device here or something. I don't know what to call it. Or like a planetary model. Um, okay, I think that's pretty much it. Never mind, that is not it. <laughs> uh, let's see what this blackboard says on it. It's very quick. It just goes quite quickly. Okay, so here is some... So where, oh. So that's weird. So this is part of the matrix that we, that I mentioned before is in the intro of every episode. Uh, so we got the X1, Y1, Z1, 1. And we got the TX, TY, T1. Uh, so that's kind of the 2D to 3D projection again, kind of popping up. Six, one, three, four. I, I, I keep seeing these around like the journals and on this blackboard. I have no idea what it means. Could it be um, just like how we saw the blind on the on the minus $12 bill? Could it be um, a thing where you have to add up all of the digits and then it will become uh, an A1Z26 cipher? I don't know. Uh, this looks like stone the Stonehenge thing that we saw, but it's also capital pies, I guess. Um, 918, 918. Again, we have the 8... Oh, no, 816 is not 918. Wait, so that's upside down. That's oh, I'm so confused. We have some symbols here and some symbols here. And here... Oh, my gosh, there's symbols all around. Okay, so let's, let's explore with this a little bit. What I will say is... Well, we're, okay, so we're still missing four letters in this. So there's four letters that just haven't been used yet in this cipher. So I'm kind of waiting for that to pop up and then we can kind of figure out what they are. Um, but anyway, so we ha we start with a... Is that a double? I, I, I can't tell. I can't tell if that's like a W or if it's a different symbol, but I'm, I'm going to put it as five for now. Um, I guess I will see you when I've typed all this out and... I'm ready to solve it. Hmm. There's there is a symbol down here which is just like a a curve, like an N. But it doesn't look like we have that yet. As I was saying, like we we could be seeing letters here that aren't actually in our cipher yet. So I'm gonna put that as 23 because we don't have a 23. Uh, just to rem remind us that 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 could be a different letter. Um, okay. But I think the rest of this could actually spell out some some words. So let's see what it does. Something in the episode as well that I, there's also that, hmm, I'll put that down. Um, something in the episode as well that kind of made me like think about things is like, Grunkle Ford at one point said that if you do this, you will be encrypting your mind or something so that Bill Cypher can't get into it. And if you think about it, that's, that is what these codes are doing, right? We're encrypting or we're de decrypting messages that are probably hidden so that Bill Cipher, a supernatural force, cannot like gain access to information and stuff. 
that's the point of ciphers and stuff like that. So quite interesting law wise as well with that. And I still wonder if there's somebody behind, if there's somebody behind all of these codes and stuff. Um, it doesn't look like this is anything. Oh, so we have think. So that think is, where's that think? That is this. So think is up here. And then we have liar down here. Liar. That makes me think of uh, liar monster snappy dresser, which is one of the other codes that we got from this. Um, so we've got black, white, oh, napes. Unless that's a different letter right there. Oh, napes. <laughs> what is an oh, nape? <laughs> So the only four letters we're missing in this cipher is J, Q, X, and Z. And those are, I think, the four least common letters in our alf alphabet anyway. So could that fit in? Not really. Um, what was it again? J, Q. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not any of those. So O napes, unless, this is, unless these together make more of a sentence, think... But this doesn't make sense. Yeah, I don't think, unless I've done it wrong somehow, I don't think there's anything else here. It looks like there should be, but I cannot get it. And it's not like backwards, it's not sepano or something. Um, hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll think about that. I'll keep this here and, and think about that. Oh my gosh, this scene is insane as well. Um, I see some math in the background. I see some gamma functions. I see a wormhole right there. I see 888 Bill Cipher on a book. There's lo just loads of books. Just loads of books everywhere. It's such a cool scene. Like they, they could have done this, like they, they could have spent way less time on the animation of this, but they made it so fluid and so pretty, right? But also so creepy. Like it, it's, it's strangely eerie and mysterious. Hmm, okay. So I think that this episode is one of the best episodes we've ever seen, or I've ever seen. Um, I would I would even go as far to say it's second or third best. I don't actually like the unicorn plot line that there was, but everything else in this episode, absolutely insane. Um, let's have a look at all of these characters before we do anything else. So we start out with Wendy, I think that is, and then Old Man McGucket, and then Candy. We've got, um, I always forget her name, Pacifica, and then Tyler, who is now the mayor. Uh, we have Lazy Susan, uh, big Wendy dad guy. Um, what's his name? Uh, Handy Dan or something. Manly Dan. Uh, Robbie... This is Lolf and Dundgren. Uh, I forget his name too, but one of the police officers. The other police officers, Blubs and something. Uh, Toby Determined. Uh, nor the other North, the Preston Northwest, I think it is. The pig guy. Blendin Blandin, of course, is there. Uh, Chandra. Seuss. Uh <laughs> That that one guy from uh is that from is that from Summerween? He was he dressed up as a pirate in Summerween, I think. And then I forgot her name. Um Tambry. I always I keep saying I forget her name and then I get the name instantly. Blood Bud Glee Bud Gleeful. Um I think the lesson to learn here, or not the lesson, but oh Robbie's parents. It's, it's cool that we're seeing all these again. Oh, and, and it just loops. It loops. Um, the, the thing that you need to remember here is that there's one character here that's mysteriously not shown. And that is, of course, Gideon. And the reason I say Gideon as well is because in the last episode, at the end, we saw that he was going to be working with Bill. So... It seems like there's going to be another handshake going on there and then he's going to be let out of prison, or not let out, but he's going to break out of prison 
Gideon is going to be back and Bill Cipher is going to be with him and that's going to be the big finale of Gravity Falls. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Let's get into the next episode. It is crazy. I've been recording for one and a half hours. <laughs> Literally, the episode that we did, um, well, or the last reaction video that I did, literally took like an hour and 10 minutes to record in total like it, it was not long at all um but this already just one episode reaction and um an analysis it's taken an hour and a half so i think we best get into episode number 16 let's go we're getting so close thanks for letting me bring candy and grinda along for our road trip grunkle stan the more the merrier just sign these non-disclosure agreements <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Uh, nothing. Just Wendy stuff from old times. Ugh. Just Wendy stuff. Uh, I know, I know. I know she's not interested, and I know it's over, but how do you just turn off the way you feel about someone? Two words, Dipper. Move on. Yeah, dude. It's easier said than done. <laughs> Okay, okay, in interesting premise for an episode. I'm assuming this is going to be less lore heavy, seeing as we got some massive reveals in the last episode. Seems a bit unbalanced. <laughs> this this show is a bit unbalanced. Just get a few episodes that are just like filler episodes where there's not much going on. And then occasionally you get the one massive episode that gives you whiplash. It's crazy. What? Okay, like Sue said, meet oh. new people. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, come here often? No, I'm a tourist. <laughs> you're funny and cute. I mean, not cute. I mean, you're not not cute. Whew. Let me start over. My name is Dopper. <sighs> <laughs> this is Seuss and the Real Girl Part 2. Dipper edition. <laughs> oh, that's so evil. Something on your mind, kiddo? You're thinking about Miss Cold Shoulder over there, huh? Uh, I'm so embarrassed. Look, earlier this summer, I ruined my chances with Wendy. <laughs> yeah, chances. <laughs> the moment I open my mouth around them, I unravel like, like, well, I can't think of a perfect metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky for you, I'm an expert on women. Listen to me, kid. When it comes to girls, always be confident and be funny, but not too funny. And be kind of annoying, but in a lovable way. I don't know, Grunkle Stan. This sounds kind of jerky. Yeah, you can't really describe. You just have to be yourself, Dipper. Well, you go darn son of a no good. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty miles to upside down town. No. Oh, that's so cool. So weird. <laughs> oh, just kidding. <laughs> you are the worst. You bet I am. I'm bad. I'm a I'm kind of a jerk. Emma, come on. We have to get to Canada before your mother gives birth. It's a long story. Maybe you could tell me sometime. Here's my email address. Hey! I'll tell you all about it. The girl gave me her email, <laughs> and it wasn't out of pity. <laughs> that was pretty good. Hi, there's my Grenda. Candy, looking great, looking great. Is that a new pair of glasses? Very shiny. <laughs> oh. Now, oh my gosh. Uh, where's Pacifica, by the way? I stand uh, Dipsifica. Now, now. <laughs> what a lovely normal home. Stand <laughs> That's great. Cool girl. <laughs> Bro, he is uh, a Sigma. And I'm not talking about math this time. <laughs> Hello? Man's got Riz. Oh my god, Seuss. No. There she is, kids. Mystery mouth. 
Ooh. Is the witch going to be here? <laughs> the hand witch? Oh, no, that was non-canon. Never mind. In a mummy museum, inside things of half human, half spider creatures. Arachnomorphs eat people? You're sitting close. <laughs> <laughs> I seem to have lost my number. Can I borrow yours? Oh, you are a riot. Yep, this is what I want. This is all part of the plan and stuff. Oh, Dipper, hey. <gasps> Corn maze girl. I was wondering when you'd call. Dipper, who is this? Nobody. I mean, uh, somebody, but... Dipper. Oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> this is so awkward. Dipper Pines. I thought you were a nice guy, but I guess you only care about yourself. What? Oh, come on. Oh, I messed everything up. I gotta find Stan. He'll know what to do. Oh, are you sure you want to go this deep? It's character evolution. Also, that is terrifying. People stuff is just an urban legend. I can't believe people fall for it. You're so brave. What can I say? I'm a real cat. She's a spider woman. Yes. Oh no! Uh, I think your contacts fell out. Ah! I don't know if I can look. <laughs> the good news is I've solved the mystery of where Oregon's mummies come from. The bad news is I'm about to become one. Turns out Darlene is one of those spider people. But beyond that, the date's been okay. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Trying to escape. Okay, it's fine. She's still hot. Once again, I'm kidding. I wonder what beverage pairs well with a vintage 70s. Oh, I can't. Oh, it's gross. Uh, I don't like it. <laughs> I have a plan. <laughs> yes! Ride like the wind, Sky Tram. <laughs> World's lowest treetop tram ride. Enjoy the sun. I thought that was Seuss for a minute. One miles per hour. Ah, oh, move, move, move! Ah, uh, can't this thing go any faster? No, it can't. This is Trambians. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, they are all dead at this point. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, kid, I gotta admit something. I'm no expert on women. Truth is, I've been divorced once and slapped more times than I can remember. Confidence can buy you a lot, but at the end of the day, pickup artists tend to get our heads bitten off. When it comes to women, I'm a failure. Hey, we're both failures. Make that three. Your dating tips were bad. I actually haven't thought about Wendy all day. That's see, that's improvement. Hey, I found a pamphlet I don't think you've read yet. Oh, that's really cute. I still feel a little bad about wrecking those tourist traps. Ah, come on, everyone loves my pranks, and the best part is they're I gonna get back and they're gonna be pranked. Sweet Lord. Yeah, oh, Stan is a hack. Stan is a butt. Oh. That's what you get! That's what you get! <laughs> that is kind. You kind of did deserve that. Nah, I'm sure Seuss will take care of it. Where is Seuss anyway? <laughs> I forgot about him! <laughs> Emma taught you. When you get lost, stay exactly where you are and don't move. Oh, Seuss. You naive little soul. That was a great cutaway at the end. I loved that. All right, let's put some codes together and stuff. This one is not going to take as long because there aren't as many codes, obviously. Uh, it's literally just going to be this one and the key for the Visionaire. But pretty good episode. Not one of my favorites, again, but still pretty good. And that is also pretty good. I think, I think that goes right there.
Perfect. Woo! Let's solve the numbers. There are a lot of numbers, so I'll see you in 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, I've got it, and that took a while. <laughs> Let's see. Carla McCorkle returned all his flowers. Marilyn divorced him after only six hours. Beatrice slapped him for being a cad. Old Goldie's the best girlfriend. Ah, okay, it should work now. Okay. Carla McCorkle returned all his flowers. Marilyn divorced him after only six hours. Beatrice slapped him for being a cad. Old Goldie's the best girlfriend Stan ever had. I'm assuming this is wrong. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so <laughs> oh, that's funny. So um, that's about going called Stan uh, and his, his girlfriends. He mentioned that he was divorced once. Um, so Carla McCorkle returned all his flowers. Um, we've heard the name Carla before. I think, uh, that was by Gideon. He, one of the codes was like, Carla, will you go out with me or something? Um, but we don't know if that's the same Carla. I don't think, um, Marilyn divorced him after only six hours. Beatrice slapped him for being a cad. Beatrice. I don't think we've heard of a Beatrice. And then Old Goldie's the best girlfriend Stan ever had. Um, and Old Goldie is, of course, from the uh, Susan the Real Go Girl episode. Um, he was with Old Goldie. That's really funny. Okay, cool. So that's that one. If the code is anywhere, it's going to be in the upside down house and the code is going to be upside down. Or the key, sorry. The key's going to be upside down in the upside down house. Uh, I would imagine. Uh, come on, it has to be here. Upside down. Upside down. Meow. <laughs> Is meow... Oh, I was going to say, uh, meow looks like a word that's the same upside down as it is. Back to, uh, like, right side up, but no, it's not. It's very clearly not. Um... Yeah, okay. I, I don't think we're going to find this key, man, but I'll keep looking. <laughs> okay, I, I couldn't find the key, but <laughs> one thing I would want to point out here is there's upside down writing of you stink everywhere. <laughs> Meaning the, the people from the upside down place wrote it. Oh, it's so funny. I love all of the references and stuff in these episodes. They're just really great. Okay, I'm going to look up where the key is. Okay, where is the key? Is it here? I, I did look here. Um, so it's either there or it's here. I would imagine it's in the first one rather than there. Okay, let's let's have a look here. As I say, I did actually look here quite closely and I didn't see a key. So, um... Ah! That's really sneaky. But I, I quite like it. I quite like that. Um, I don't know what it is yet, but we've got a key up here. There's a D. I think that's an O. Oh, it's Dopper. Okay. Hey, guys, I'm Dopper Pines. Um, so it's a D. There's an O. There's a P, P, E, R. So Dopper. I'm okay with that. That's fine. Um, I don't think I was going to find that, but... Yeah, like, like I say, I, I did actually stay on the scene for a little while. I was like, yeah, I, I'm... I'm confident it's probably going to be here, if anywhere, and I didn't see those letters, so... It might have just been me not being very observant, but... Dopper is the key. Okay, so let's solve the code. Right, so this one is also pretty long. So let's have a look at what we've got. Seuss... Oh no. It's, when it starts with Seuss, you know it's just going to be good. Um, oh god, this, this isn't long enough, is it? Oh... Oh, there we go. Okay. Seuss, like a noble golden retriever, even eventually found his way home with and befriended at... befriended a, a talking 
bulldog and a sassy cat along the way. What the hell? <laughs> Wait a second. Wait a second. Is this what it's talking about? Homeward Bound? That's a bulldog, right? And that's, I, I guess that's a sassy cat. So wait, Seuss like a noble golden retriever. Golden, re is that golden retriever? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I need to look up what a golden retriever looks like. Yeah, man. It's talking about Homeward Bound. Oh, this is such an old movie. I don't even remember what it's about, but I remember like seeing seeing the title Homeward Bound and thinking, what the hell does Homeward Bound mean? <laughs> um, but it's it seems to be a story about a golden retriever, a bulldog, and I guess a sassy cat. So yeah, it says, Seuss, like a noble golden retriever, eventually found his way home, homeward, yeah, just like Homeward Bound, and befriended a talking bulldog and a sassy cat along the way. So I guess Homeward Bound, I think the plot is probably a dog gets lost and has to find its way back home. And I'm assuming that's the golden retriever. And along the way, it finds the bulldog and the cat and they um, do what they do. 1993, by the way, 1993. I, I do remember this being Pretty, pretty okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, yeah. It's a thing that exists. But there you go. I think that's a reference to Homeward Bound, which I cannot believe I got that reference. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of references I've been missing throughout these episodes. A lot of voice actors that I don't know. Like, Weird Al Yankovic was in the last, um, was in the last um, reaction. I don't know him that well, but I know he exists and I know he's a funny guy. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, I, I don't know voice actors or like any kind of pop culture references. So it's really cool that I got that one, even though it was um, a strange reference to make at the time. All right, we are briefly going to be moving on to episode number 17, 18, 17, I think. Yeah, 17. So uh, I will do that in a second, but I have been recording for two hours. So I'm going to go to the toilet and I'm going to just do some stuff and then come back to you in like 10 minutes. Okay, bye. Oh yeah, so now is probably a really good time to mention that um, you've probably seen or you may not have seen that I have been working on a new series on the channel. Um, and of course, it's not going to overtake Gravity Falls or anything because we're going to still be working on Gravity Falls with all the books and stuff that we need to talk about. And of course, I want to... Uh, I don't know, do like a podcast or something where we just talk about Gravity Falls and stuff. I would love to do that. I think that would be sick. But on the side, I have been having some other things in production, um, which is why sometimes Gravity Falls content has been slower. But um, you just saw a teaser and there have been other teasers in the past as well. Um, and what I can tell you right now, and I, I want to keep a lot of it a secret because I have big plans for it. Um, but it is related to what I was talking about um, previously when I said that I wanted to do videos on like the history of the Visionaire Cypher and stuff like that because it's it's really, really interesting to to actually do the research into it and and to see what the um, the like the how the cipher works and like how it was created and stuff. It's really, really cool the whole story of like cryptography and stuff and, ha and how that came to be to what it is today. And um, the, the cool thing about the Visionaire Cypher is that it was created and it was used, but it went unsolved for 300 years, which is absolutely insane. And I've done a lot of research into it. And that is going to be the first video in that series. But it's going to be a lot more than just a series. And that is all that I'm going to say right now. 
um, because I'm sure you will figure out that out when the first video comes out. I don't have a planned date for release of that yet. I'm still quite early in the production of it, but expect that to come out on the channel once Gravity Falls is kind of in its book era on this channel. Okay, so let's move on to episode number 17. This is going to be the last one before the three slash four part finale. Next video. Okay, let's give it a watch. One week away from our 13th birthday! Oh, mad! They're actually going to be teens. Remember in the inconveniencing where it was like, we're almost teens? Or basically teens? Well, <laughs> there is something wrong with you. There's something it's wrong cool with to see them get on. Why, why, why the mystery as it zoomed into the 13th birthday? It's interesting. Ba, ba, ba. I got it right this time. It's the short intro. <laughs> Not so fast, Goofus and Girl Goofus. After that zombie incident, no one's throwing another party at my house. I keep fighting little bits of the undead in the couch. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Pepper, my face is on fire. I'll just be a sec. Great Uncle Ford, are you okay? Oh, yes, I'm fine. I just said that to make sure you'd come in here quickly. But your face is on fire. <laughs> it's much faster than shaving. Now, what? this is what Bill has been waiting for. If it breaks, it would cause reality as we know it to completely unravel. A hypothetical and catastrophic event I call Weird Mageddon. Okay. Bill is out there, and he'd use any trick, from deception to outright possession, to make this happen. But Dipper's gonna want to spend his birthday as his birthday. You should totally go with Grunkle Ford to save the world or whatever. Are you sure? We're gonna be doing birthday junk all week. Plus, I packed us walkie-talkies. Oh, I know what's gonna happen. Weird McGannon is the apocalypse they were talking about. Hurry, we haven't much time. And they're not going to be able to spend their birthday as their birthday because of Weird Mageddon. Don't mess this up. Ow! Ah, I'm alright. <laughs> oh my gosh, Differ. Keep your cool. Would you say your experience is more rom-com or wacky romp? More like teen horror movie. <laughs> High school is the worst. Classes get super hard. Your body just flat out turns against you. Yeah. And worst of all, Everybody hates you. Yeah. Sounds about right. Can't do another year. My hormones are like a sweaty cage. <laughs> TV taught me that high school is like some sort of musical. <sighs> oh, Mabel. So innocent. What are you guys doing here? Oh, just looking for a place to have my 13th birthday party. Wendy Borderoy. I mean, corduroy. <laughs> See what I mean? Oh, Mabel. I'm going through a bad patch, Mabel. We'll talk when I get back. Dipper, come in, come in. Hey, I know it'll make you feel better. Let's deliver some invites to your friends, huh? I feel really bad for Mabel at the end of the season. I actually really do. No escape. Uh, I feel like she's going through it. Look at the peculiar shape made by those cliffs. Does it remind you of anything? I've been wondering about this. Mm. A key. Oh! We've been teased about this! Okay. The entire valley of Gravity Falls was formed when an extraterrestrial object crash landed here millions of years ago. I see. Now it now I see it. It does look like a UFO. Don't worry, I've been down here countless times. All the aliens have been dead for millions of years. Probably. Uh-oh. <laughs> Finally, we're getting UFO content. Oh, that's I mean, come on, that's clearly a UFO. <laughs> How did people not spot that? I wish my mind could be where yours is right now, Dipper. When confirmation of extraterrestrials still had that punch. Now it's just sort of... Eh. Huh. I really like Ford's character. Works really well with Dipper. I can study their language. 
Oh no, oh no! There's so much I have to decode. Oh hi Mabel! You're just in time for our one o'clock boy talk! If you think that's good, boom! Me and Dipper's 13th birthday jam! Oh man, your birthday's on the last day of summer. I'm not gonna be here! What? But at least you can come, right Candy? Sorry Mabel, my parents sent me to music camp this time of year. There is no escape from music camp. So neither of you are gonna be at my birthday party? Oh. I'm sorry, Mabel. Summer happened so fast. Dipper, please come in. Our party mission is going down in flames. Over. Oh. Oh, Mabel. Oh, it's so tragic. Go ahead. Flip any switch. They've all been busted for millions of years. <laughs> Flare off. Did you eat my farm? <laughs> that was so funny. I mean, beyond graduating high school with a high GPA so I can get accepted to a good technical college with a photography and media production minor. Okay, he's so like Stanford. It's like talking to a younger version of myself. Exactly. I need to train an apprentice to help me fight monsters, solve mysteries, and protect this town. And I think I'd, I'd like to keep it in the family. What are you saying? I've read your additions to my journal, and I'm impressed with your potential. Hmm. Your parents would be thrilled I could give you such an advanced education. Yeah, but... It's also Mabel. What about Mabel? Alone in California. Oh, no. She has a magnetic personality. You can't split twins, really. It causes family division. You said everything down here is dead, right? Yes. Unless somehow we reactivated the <gasps> security system. What do we do? Balls? I've studied these. They're security droids. And Bro has studied balls? <laughs> Follow my lead. Great Uncle Ford. Focus, Dipper. Oh, uh, I, uh, I, I, uh, I can't. That's a really interesting premise for a, for an enemy or a security system. You're gonna have to do it without me! Use the adhesive! Fix the rift! Save the universe, Dipper! Be on the board! Well, that's terrifying. No, no, no! What on earth is going on? I don't understand this! <laughs> it's really creative, though. Oh my gosh, Dipper! Dipper! The CGI on this is crazy. I gotta get out of here before. Feel no fear. Hey! Uh, I'm warning you! I have a magnet gun! Oh yeah? You think you can scare me? Do your worst! Nothing in this universe is gonna take away my uncle! So go ahead! Nice! The confidence is, uh... Is working. The fake confidence. Good job, Dipper. I did it? You did it. <laughs> the music is incredible. 12 year olds do you think are capable of doing what you've just done? Exactly. Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. Hey, everything all right, pumpkin? Oh, Grunkle, stop! <laughs> now that I know how awful high school is going to be. Oh, those memories. Hey, at least whatever happens after this summer, you'll still have your brother along with you through thick and thin. Not everyone can say that, you know? No. Listen to me, Dipper. This town is a magnet for things that are special. And that includes you and me. It brought both of us here for a purpose. Stay here with me, Dipper. Become my apprentice. I feel so bad for Mabel. I'm gonna stay. Excellent. Now, who wants to save the world? 
apprentice. <laughs> <laughs> I feel the weight of everything now. Tell me it's not true, Dipper. Tell me you're joking. <gasps> Ford's apprentice? Seriously? Look, I was thinking, and this is a huge opportunity for me. Well, it's a horrible opportunity for me. I just wish summer could last forever. But it can't, Mabel. Look, things aren't going to stay frozen this way. It's part of growing up. Things change. Summer ends. <laughs> Mabel, wait! I didn't mean it like that! <laughs> the music. I can't tell you enough how good it is. Nerd books? To the pins? Ugh, wrong backpack. It's not fair. I just wish summer could last forever. That might be possible. Sweater Town is not accepting incoming calls right now. M M M Mabel, it's me. What? Who said that? I, I can help. Oh, Blandin. What? Y you said you don't want summer to end, right? D did I hear that right? Yeah. It's called the time bubble, and it prevents time from going forward. Summer and Gravity Falls can last as long as you want it to. R really? But how does it work? I just need you to get a little This is Bill Cipher. Your uncle. Something small. He yeah, it's Bill Cipher. Oh, no. Nice. Mabel didn't take it well. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm making the wrong decision. I called it, by the way. That clearly is not, that is not blending. Now, come on, I've got the glue, hand me the rift, and let's make history. What? <laughs> oh no, the rift! Oh no! Oh no, she has the whole backpack! Uh, just hand it over and I'll do my thing. Unless you're ready to leave Gravity Falls. Just a little more summer. No! 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 <laughs> oh no! Wait, wait, wait! I knew it! I told you! I told you! At last! <laughs> At long last! The gate between worlds has opened! The event one billion years prophesied has come to pass! The day has come! The world is finally mine! Has he been brought to life now or something? Like he actually exists in reality? Or the multiverse is opening or something? Blind eye? Yo! <laughs> I'm gonna choke. The screaming. Again, it's it's one of those endings where it's like... I, I was saying throughout that episode, I, I feel the weight on top of this now. Like, it really feels like it matters. Oh my gosh, that was... Again, one of the greatest episodes, I think. That was insane. I feel so bad for Mabel. And I understand why she did that. I think the blending trap was genius by not only Bill Cipher but Alex Hirsch. I mean, I know that they're technically the same, but um, oh my gosh, I can't even word my thoughts right now. Other than that was just incredible. Um, peak television, all all around. Um, I loved every minute of it. <laughs> it was great. Um, what what can I say? Um, I love Grunkle Ford's character and. I, I think we knew this was going to happen at some point. Um, and it kind of made sense for this to to be the... Uh, it kind of made sense for this episode to be the beginning of... What was it? A Weird Armageddon? What was it called? Weird Armageddon, I think it was? Weird... Or Weird Mageddon. I think it was Weird Mageddon. 
Um, so yeah, it kind of makes sense for this to be the beginning of the apocalypse that we've been teased about so many times. Uh, UFOs, we finally got content for. Great. Um, Mabel being sad, like, I completely understand her. Summer's ending, she has to grow up, she has to go to a high school that uh, Wendy is saying is going to be absolutely terrible, and Dipper is going to split up from her, which is even worse knowing that she's found out that Grunkle Stan has a twin brother, and they're not, that they're twins, but they're not, that they're, they don't um, reconcile, that they're, they're not, um, they don't have a very good relationship, so like, it was teased quite early on, when we found out that Stan has a brother, that Mabel felt this way. Um, Mabel was like, I, I really don't want me and Dipper to be apart, which is really sweet. Like that, it shows that Mabel does have the purest of hearts. Oh my gosh, this episode, amazing. Um, let's solve the codes. Um, I think there's a lot more alien code from before, but I think I'm going to wait until my season two lore hunt to solve that because it looked like there was a lot and I've already been recording for quite long. So let's just get into the regular codes for each episode. We've got ourselves a UFO, ladies and gentlemen. I knew this would come eventually. I've been saying there's so much UFO imagery and it is crazy. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. It was crazy that it all led up to this episode in particular. Um, so it looks like this goes up here as our last piece on the left. I think there's a little gap, but I don't really care. Well, I do, but hopefully you don't. You know what? I'm just going to do this. There we go. <laughs> no one will ever know. <laughs> so there, there's one of Grunkle Stan's huge ears right there. I'm assuming next time uh, we're going to get this ear and then we're going to get his eyes and then the top of Ford's hair and then the middle frame, which is probably going to be Bill Cipher or something or like the summoning circle or something. I don't know. Um, cool. Let's solve the numbers for this. Oh my God, there's so many again. It's really crazy how you could almost feel the tone shift in that episode, like there, there was a certain point in that episode, there was an inflection point. I think it was when Mabel was talking to Grunkle Stan. That was an inflection point of like, this, the, t the tone of this show has suddenly gone from funny and lighthearted to we're back in the room and we're back to Bill Cipher kind of vibes. We're back to vibes where everything feels like it has purpose and, and matters. The worst part about all of this is like, I completely forgot that Gideon is um, is gonna be breaking out of prison as well. So not only are we going to have weird Mageddon, whatever that is, we're also gonna have Gideon coming back. So there, there's a lot of things going on. And I guess this is a, a race to, to end it all before Dipper and Mabel's birthday, right? I, I hope that the series finishes with their happiest day. <laughs> I hope that Dipper and Mabel, uh, I, I hope that their final day in Gravity Falls is them celebrating their birthday party with everybody in the town. And then the last scene of Gravity Falls is gonna be like Grunkle Stan and Grunkle Ford getting along, waving the kids goodbye. Uh, and they're on the bus going home and then I don't know, and, and Bill Cipher is dead or something. There's like remnants of Bill Cipher or something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I really, really hope that that is the way this all ends. Anyway, let's have a look at this code. The prophecy seemed far away, but finally we've reached the day. Give up the past, embrace the strange, everything you care about will change. Amazing. Cool code. Okay, completely relevant. I'm going to talk about that loads. Okay, let's find the key. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just so eager to get into the next few episodes. I know it's going to be wild. It's going to be weird. It's going to be a weird Mageddon, maybe. I, I feel like because it's like the equivalent, it's technically three episodes, but it's the equivalent of four episodes runtime wise. Um, I have a feeling it's going to be 
the same energy as like dreamscaperers and um not what he seems and tale of two stands those sorts of vibes of episodes for four episodes long and that's gonna be wild like my like that that reaction video next video is gonna be me going <gasps> the entire time and just screaming down my mic so i better do that at a uh, a suitable time <laughs> Um, I think I'm actually going to record that tomorrow, and it is it is currently Sunday as I as I'm speaking. Um, so hopefully Monday I'll record that. It will go up on Thursday. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited! This is really cool to just look at real quick. Uh, we got an, a six one eight backwards. Got some rings. This is really cool. Bill Cipher coming out of the ground. Everything's falling into the ground. There's fire everywhere. This is going to be like mul what Multiverse of Madness should have been, I assume. Um, I wonder if we'll see like other Dipper and Mabels. Wouldn't that be sick? Um, let me see if I can find this key. Which, you know, I would assume the key is in here somewhere. Uh, there's all of this language, this alien language. Uh, we haven't seen these before, though. I don't know what those are. Uh, and I'm sure we can decode this right now. I'm sure we can. I'm not going to, though, because um, I don't want to spend too much longer recording right now. You know, I, I have a life to live. Um, oh, that that was so sad when Grenda and Candy were like, sorry, we're not going to be here. Oh, be, oh boy. Um, okay. Key, 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 key. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, that's ridiculous. I'm trying not to look as best I can at other, other codes and stuff, but I'm on the wiki and it said that the key was found here. And I was like, where is it? <laughs> it, uh, it starts there, at least I can see. Um, let me have a look. Okay. <laughs> this is the weirdest place. This is the weirdest place to hide a key. Okay, so key down here... B, L, U, E. So blue. And then there's a B down here. Blue, blue B, O, O, blue, blue bow, blue, Bilbo? Bilbo Baggins? Blue, okay, so blue B, B I, blue bio, blue bip, blue bio, is that an E as well? Oh, I don't even, I can't even get it. Like, I see it, but I can't even get it. Is that an N? Blue, I don't know. I don't, I can't see it. Okay, um, I'm trying, okay, so we, yeah, okay. So I I got this already, so that's fine. Um, this says uh, blue book. Blue book can be seen on the fences, what? Blue book, blue, B-O-O. -O. I cannot see the K. I don't get that one. That's the first one. I like, like that's the first key I don't actually understand. I don't see the K. Oh, it seems like that's a K. But then where's the other O? I can't find it. I'm sorry guys. <laughs> I must have let you down. Um we don't even need to decode it as well because we're on the wiki. Um it says ext because which once decoded using the VGNS cipher reads, "Did you miss me?" So that's Bill so Oh wait. So maybe the person sending these codes is Bill Cipher, like we've been saying. I'm fine with that. I, I think um, I agree with that. Um, something that I think is interesting is, is before we've been talking about who is sending these messages. And, um, and as I just said, Bill Cipher. But something even more interesting is the fact that like Bill Cipher seems to be on a tier higher than 
like the TVA essentially. So like you have these guys who are like um, taking control of the time. Um, I don't know what the TVA is called in this universe. I, I've heard it multiple times, but I prefer just saying TVA. But I'm, I'm talking about the time guys. Um, so the part the, where Blendin, Blandin is and stuff like that. They seem to be traveling through time and stuff like that. But it seems like even though it would seem like those guys, the time travelers seem to be on like a level above the the mortals and stuff. You've also got Bill Cipher on top of even the time travelers. So does that mean that Bill Cipher can time travel? And does that mean that Bill Cipher is like fourth wall breaking and aware and stuff like that? That That's quite interesting to me um, that he seems to even take control of Blendin Blandin, right? Um, so that's quite interesting. Yeah. Um, this is a really good episode. I actually love the blend in design here. I think that it's it was a really, really smart by the creator of the show to make blend in the evil here possessed by Bill. Because at first I was like, yeah, that's that's blend in. That's mad that he's come back and he's giving them an offer. But wait, why would he do that? And then it's because he wants this. And it was very clear that that was Bill. Uh, even his voice sounded a bit like weird. And look at the scenery as well, right? The scenery, like this is not, this is not scenery I would associate with like happiness and like positive, like in, in previous episodes, if this was actually Blendon talking to Mabel and offering her something, it would be a lot lighter around and it wouldn't be in the middle of a freaking forest. So, wow, 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 wow. Okay, let me end this episode then. Guys, it has been an absolute pleasure. I've been recording for almost three hours now. Um, but it seems like next time I'm going to be recording for even longer than three hours because we have essentially four episodes that we need to watch through. Uh, and I'm assuming it's going to be all Bill Cipher taking over the world or something and then them killing Bill Cipher and then happy, happy family. Um... I hope that that's what it is, at least, because that will be peak television, as I keep saying. Anyway, these episodes were genuinely really fun. I really enjoyed my time today. Um, but I will see you on Thursday, Halloween, and we will be watching the finale together in the premiere. Make sure you're there. And thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.